I, I, as I was saying, we had you on not that long ago to uh, welcome you to the uh, to the company, the Nation Network, with the uh, with Cool Button, you and uh, and Cooley. And at the time, I guess we were talking about Brad Treliving and Daryl Sutter and the relationship between the two. And what was it? Was it really maybe as bad as we were led to believe? And ah, it'll all kind of figure itself out and they'll all come together. Yet here we are now and the GM leaves. And then two weeks later, the coach leaves. The order doesn't really make sense to me. It makes me wonder why one, why both happened. If one could have happened, I get your take on what you've seen here is now Calgary is without GM or coach. Yeah, well, it, it, it's interesting because Brad had been here for so long and, and then he steps away. And I mean, you know, Daryl with two years left on his contract, you know, you, you, you would think, okay, this is a scenario where, you know, people are going to have to uh, understand, okay, what can we do better? What can we manage better? What, how can we coach better? And, you know, Every situation with a coach and a manager is going to have its moments of friction. That's just normal course of, of, of operation. But, you know, when, when Brad leaving and, you know, and, and maybe wanting a longer term contract and not being there and feeling that, hey, listen, I want to be rewarded for the work that I've done. I get that part of it. But with, with Daryl being let go, I, I wasn't surprised and yet I was surprised. You know, and so the, the surprised in the sense that, like, you know, you, you put a stake in the ground. You know, Rhett, you, you've talked about, uh, you know, you got to learn how to be coached by Daryl. We know Daryl is a good coach. But through the process that Don Maloney went through, not Brad Treliving, I think that, uh, you know, Don decided that it was probably best. And, and I don't know this either. Like, you, you make one decision thinking, okay, we're going to keep Daryl. But maybe in the process of looking at other candidates to be the general manager, People are saying, I'm not coming in out of the work under that environment. And, you know, maybe that's what led Don Maloney to, to make that decision on Daryl. But, you know, it, one of the things that I think is important is that it's a it's a fresh slate. And, and for the players that may not have liked Daryl, that may have expressed that they weren't coming back to play or they weren't excited about coming back to play, you know, this is squarely now back on them to come back and play and play well and play to their capabilities. There will be no passing the buck or blaming others for lack of production, especially the high paid foot guys. You mentioned fresh slate, and I know that Don Maloney, he used that in his press conference the other day. And I got to thinking afterwards, was, boy, a year ago, when they when Goudreau scores the OT winner, game seven, and you're off to round two, it didn't feel like a team that needed a fresh slate, you know? It, no one was questioning Daryl or 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 to living or the team quite frankly it all went very south in a very in a short amount of time and i guess now we talked about it earlier and i'll ask you if you're a a potential if you're a candidate for this gm job how would you characterize the team that you would be taking over it's some some call it a mess some say that you're there's so much cap implications there's nothing you can do to maneuver you've been a gm if you were coming in how would you describe the situation here well, I think it's a capable team. I, I think we look at it, we're all surprised that they missed the playoffs based on uh, the, the quality of player they had. And certainly, you know, Kachuk has shown how valuable he was to the team. We know how good Goudreau was and it didn't mesh. But at the same time, th there's still a lot of good players there. I, I think, Boomer, going forward, it's about next summer. You know, like if all the players that are potential unrestricted free agents don't return, that creates a, a, a real challenge for the Calgary Flames because you, you're losing, you're losing to Foley, you're losing Lindholm, you're losing Hannafin, you're losing Tanner. You're, you're now losing some really good players. So I think for a manager coming in, it, it, it's about looking at what you have and, and sustaining it and, and trying to create uh, a, an environment and a team that can have success so that you can keep certain players and, and, and obviously the cap is always going to play into it. But, and, and also if you can't keep some players, be able to attract some others. I mean, the Calgary Flames attracted Markstrom here. They attracted Chris Tanev here. They attracted Nazem Kadri here. That's not by accident. It was a, players are looking, competitive players are looking for an opportunity to be successful. So that was, that was in place. So I think that for a new GM, that's what you're trying to create and that's what you're you're trying to do. And, you know, Rhett, when you got traded here, you know, the, the, the team hadn't made the playoffs. And then through your tenor here, I mean, it was a really good team. And, 
you're able to attract players here and, and you were a good team. And, you know, you, you might say, OK, back in 01 or 02, it was harder. But all of a sudden the team has success and players are excited about success. At the, at the heart of it, I would say good, good. Sorry, Red, just good players want to compete. And they want to have a chance to win. Yeah, and that, I was just going to say there was a time when nobody wanted to go to Tampa Bay. Like yep. envision that, right? Like it was like that was like no, no, no. You don't want to end up there. That is a that's a black hole. You'll just get lost down there. You don't want to go play there. <laughs> I mean, is there a place that guys would rather go than Tampa? I don't know. But it does change, and it's all based on winning. Yeah, I agree. With so much speed and skill and youth that we're seeing now in the playoffs, does that? It, it kind of does I, to me, and it's careful what you wish for. I just feel like when you talk about potentially extending the likes of Atanev to Foley, Backlund, even Lindholm, you already have Kadri and Huberdeau and Uyghur signed long term. Don't you don't you feel like an uh, even one more or two more long term contracts to guys on the other side of thirty just feels extremely dangerous for this team right now? Depends how long term they are. You know, is, is it seven year deals? Is it four year deals? Is it three year deals? And I, I, and I think it's it, it's managing all those different things. But, you know, look at Luke Shen going to Toronto and, and you know, Bruce Boudreau. I, I talked to Bruce Boudreau prior to the trade deadline and he talked about Luke and he said, Luke really through his years playing in Tampa Bay, back to the Tampa Bay. He said he really learned what the strength and the essence of his game is. And now you watch Luke Shen play, look at how much he's helping Morgan Riley. You, you can't have just all Morgan Riley's and you can't just have all Luke Shen. So it's always about a balance in your lineup of, uh, of what works and where the complementary players fit. Boomer, you're right. You can't have all players on seven year contracts where you have no flexibility. But I think that you, you evaluate where players are. And, you know, Tyler Toffoli, I don't think he's ever been a fast skater. So we would, but he's a really good hockey player. <laughs> and, you know, we got to factor that in too. You know, one of the things I, I remember Bob Ganey saying this about Guy Carmel later in his career, he said, yeah, he, a couple of things. He doesn't skate as fast as he once did, but he knows where to go. And if he doesn't, if he can't get there, he knows where to stand. <laughs> so some Can players are really fast and have no idea what they're doing or where to go. Is there a benefit or a caution or or negative, I guess, with that. There's seven guys coming up on last year of their deal. We've all seen it. Guys play the pretty damn, typically guys play real good the last year of their deal. Like, can that be, play into the Flames' hands a little bit where either you're going to see results, obviously, or... Even if you're not, if, if you're struggling and you don't think you're making a playoff set, wow. But I feel like if everyone's playing up on the last mm -hmm. year of a deal, right? Like, I, I think it's really muddy because I don't know what to think about that. If guys show up and they're playing their asses off and they're having great years, that's awesome. Okay, we're going to make the playoffs. Let's reward these guys. They've done it again. They got a new coach. They, he came in and he changed the attitude. And then two years out, it's, oh, we signed these guys to long year contracts. And now we're, they've kind of dropped off. They all had career years last year. I worry about that a little bit. Yeah, and, and it is something to worry about. And, and, and there, Rhett, becomes, I think, a real part and, and the real essence of the manager's job. You know, understanding that there's the here and now. And then understanding what will this look like in two, three years' time. And that's where I talk about you know, how long is long term? And, and you know, I, players want longer term. I get it. And I think you're spot on too. You know, players are competitive, number one. Number two, you are you have an expiring contract. You want to show that, hey, I'm deserving of a contract, whether it be with the current team or elsewhere. And, and you do play. There, it's, just a, it's just a little bit of an extra incentive. And I think it becomes something really, really, uh, you, you know, important. And, and we're a team. So if you're the Calgary Flames, at, at the very least, you can, okay, we made the playoffs. And, you know, you can look and say, hey, here's where we're, here's where we're at. And here's what we can offer. But, but if you're a successful team, 
then you might be able to attract other players. Like losing Kachuk and losing Goudreau, they were able to get Kadri. I mean, they they were able to get uh, Jonathan Huberto and Weger on longer term contracts. And we can debate how they're going to look, but they were able to do that because the team had success. I think even if players leave or management makes a decision to say, hey, listen, we can't sign to that contract. We're going to have to let you go. You might be able to attract some other players. I mean, Blake Coleman came to the Calgary Flames. I mean, they were ready to pay him. I think Blake's been a real good, solid player for the for the Flames in his time here. But if you don't have success, I think that's where it becomes really hard to to to, to ice a competitive team because now your good players don't want to be here, and now other players don't want to come. But you know, well, and even if you're out of the playoffs, you can trade some of these players. And, uh, to, to, to the trade deadline. I would be shocked, I, I, like I really would be, I'll say this now, if the Flames aren't in the playoffs next year. I, I, I think they have too many good players uh, to not qualify for the playoffs. I'm not saying it's easy, but I, I'd be shocked if they're not in.